Now that we've learned how to calculate the value of the equilibrium constant and how to differentiate between k sub c and k sub p, we need to take a few minutes to understand what the significance of the equilibrium constant is. When we were looking at the equilibrium constant for the hydrogen plus iodine to produce hydrogen iodide equilibrium system, we saw that the equilibrium constant was about 50. In other examples, we've seen equilibrium constants that were a little bit larger or a little bit smaller than one. In fact, equilibrium constants may range from very, very large numbers to very, very small numbers. In each case, the magnitude of the equilibrium constant can tell us something about the particular equilibrium for that reaction. If the equilibrium constant is very large, a chemist would say that the products are favored over the reactant, or they might say that the equilibrium lies to the right. So, in the example of carbon monoxide gas reacting with chlorine gas to produce COCl2 gas, we have an equilibrium constant expression of the concentration of COCl2 over the concentration of CO multiplied by the concentration of chlorine. The case of C value is 4.56 times 10 to the 9th. Certainly, this is a very large number. What this tells us is that in this particular equilibrium system, the products, the COCl2 gas, is present in a much greater abundance than the reactants, carbon monoxide and chlorine gas. However, if an equilibrium system has a K value that is very small, a chemist would say that the reactants are favored over the products or that the equilibrium lies to the left. So let's look at the example of nitrogen gas reacting with oxygen gas to produce two nitrogen monoxide gas molecules. The equilibrium constant expression is the concentration of NO gas squared divided by the concentration of N2 times the concentration of O2. The K sub C value for this equilibrium system is 1 times 10 to the minus 30. Certainly this is a very, very small number, and it's a good thing that this is a very small number because we have nitrogen gas and oxygen gas as the two major components of our atmosphere. If this equilibrium system favored the products, then we would quickly run out of oxygen gas and we wouldn't be here to learn about chemistry. Before we leave this introduction to equilibrium, Let's look at one more aspect of equilibrium constants, specifically the relationship between the equilibrium constant in the forward direction and the equilibrium constant in the reverse direction. What we find is that the equilibrium constant in the forward direction is equal to the reciprocal of the equilibrium constant in the reverse reaction. This is due to the fact that reactants and products would be switched in the equilibrium constant expressions. So for example, looking at N2O4 decomposing to produce two NO2 molecules, we have an equilibrium constant expression of the square of the NO2 concentration divided by the concentration of N2O4, and at 100 degrees Celsius, K sub C has a value of 0 0.212. However, if we were to reverse the way we write this chemical equilibrium system, so that we have two moles of NO2 gas combining to form one mole of N2O4 gas, the equilibrium constant expression in this direction would be the concentration of N2O4 divided by the square of the concentration of NO2. The value of the equilibrium constant in this direction would be one divided by 0 0.212, which is the reciprocal of the equilibrium constant in the opposite direction, and it would have a value of 4.72. By now, you should be able to understand the relationship between the value of the equilibrium constant and the ratio of the reactants and products for an equilibrium system. You should also be able to describe the relationship between the equilibrium constants for forward and reverse reactions.